Hello and welcome. Is America continuing to break barriers from the first black president to the first Arab Miss USA and in an era of rising Islamophobia? Well, for a young Lebanese-born immigrant, there's the challenge of not only answering what some call outdated beauty contests, but also conservative critics from her Arab community. Rima Fakhi of Dearborn, a town famous for its large Arab-American community, went from being the pride of Michigan to the pride of her adopted country, the USA, all in one televised evening. Despite a slight trip on her evening gown, she went on to take the crown, making her the first Arab-American and first American Muslim to win this popular contest. Standing on the runway, Rima Faki thanked her parents and requested a pizza. And meanwhile, the attacks on her character began, with some claiming she was using her good looks and charm to disguise her extremist views, and others saying she owed her selection to a liberal agenda cooked up in Washington to show how accepting the U.S. was of its Muslim population. Well, there are also critics attacking the beauty pageant industry for introducing revealing photos and objectifying women. On today's show, we ask, can women simply be judged on their beauty, or is there always a political agenda to such contests? Join our conversation with your questions and comments. Send an SMS or an email, and we also welcome your phone calls onto the show. Well, joining me now from New York City is Miss USA, Rima Fahi. During her reign, she'll work to raise awareness for breast and ovarian cancer prevention. As Miss Michigan, she served as an ambassador for the Pink Fund, which seeks to remove financial burdens for, uh, from those overcoming breast cancer. Rima Fahi has a degree in economics and plans to attend law school after she hands over her crown. Here in Washington, D.C., we have Maya Berry, who's with the Arab American Institute, a nonprofit organization that seeks to advance the political empowerment of, Arabs, of Americans of Arab descent. Ms. Berry previously worked on Capitol Hill as a legislative director for then minority leader David Bonnier. She also fund, uh, founded the consulting agency Midama Group. Ladies, I welcome you to the show. Thank you, Ernst. Rima, first of all, congratulations. Uh, I guess the world has turned upside down, right, upside down right now. Well, especially after that wonderful introduction you had. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. What happens? I know, you've, I know the contest is fairly well managed. I know you, you get a lot of uh, uh, information and, and sort of coaching on what's going to happen. But tell me what they've told you in terms of how the next year pans out for you. What happens first? Well, uh, they just told me, hold on real tight because it's going to be a wonderful roller coaster. <laughs> it's actually been an amazing 16 days so far and for the rest of the year I will be doing a lot with the breast and ovarian cancer and a lot of work uh, trying to you know set the awareness for that also preparing for Miss Universe that's August 23rd and it's going to be in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay and also so much work to do with other countries I'm going to be traveling to Rwanda for the same sky bracelets for women that were with the genocide and I'm going to China for the exhibits. So there's so much to do, but that's all that I, everything I've told you is for the next three months. So I could only imagine wow. the next 12 <laughs> months what I'm going to do. I know. Well, you know, our, our viewers are very excited to connect with you. We've got lots of emails that came in for you, and I'll put some of those to you and, and ask you a little bit about your background. So th those outside who haven't, you know, outside the USA or those who haven't had a chance to follow the contest can, can find out more about you. Let me bring in Maya Berry here, though, from the Arab American Institute. She, like you, actually was uh, uh, an immigrant who came from um, Lebanon and moved to, to America um, as a youngster like you did. Now, I'm just going to quickly ask Maya here. Um, what, what, did, what does Rima's uh, victory represent to Arab, Arab Americans? How might it build a better image for, for Arabs, especially at a time in America when you know, there are so many people who question uh, what Arabs mean to America? Well, I mean, uh, for, from our perspective, it was yet another milestone that was reached by the Arab American community, and that is that it is quintessential in American community. So we have the full range represented here in America. Uh, the famous Doug Flutie, who caught that pass during that college game, to Casey Kasem, Jamie Farr, to more contemporary yeah. artists today, and Rima simply joined that. So we're incredibly proud <laughs> in that it is an Arab American who was able to achieve, as, as people say, someone, you know, someone's basic American dream. So it, it is a wonderful thing, and, and for that, we congratulate her. Now, of course, I know, as Thank I said, you. Yeah, it's an, and in the intro, I said how you know there's been people trying to find, find all kinds of reasons to say you know good good and bad things. I guess um, uh, Rima, I want to put an email to you that we got from Canada, if I can, so I can get the viewer questions in. Sure. Rashid Chowdhury wrote in saying, while some see Rima Fahi as a symbol of uh, Muslim conspiracy to take over the U.S., some Muslims see her as a symbol of an American conspiracy to destroy Islamic values. How does Ms. Fahi feel about being instrumentalized in this debate? Tell me about the feedback you've had. You know, good and bad. I've had a lot of good compared to bad, I'd like to say that, and which is a great thing to say. Um, I just want to answer that question of what the email was consisting of. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that labels should be placed. I'm definitely not a conservative Muslim, as you can tell, I'm very liberal, and my family has an abundance of faith when it comes to religion. So I would like to uh, 
ask Rashid, I believe from Canada, to not judge a book by its cover. They read more into what I'm trying to do. I don't think that I'm going to destroy the Islamic uh, religion or the uh, re abundant, I'm sorry, the f respect that it has in the United States. I, I think I'm kind kind of destroying what it has as a stereotype because someone said something to me yesterday night and I thought it was so funny in Astoria. The man told me, I have your pictures all over my house because the first time you were the first person on TV that was Muslim and Arab that was not there for a negative image, it was there for a positive. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to think of myself as something of a positive image rather than negative. Ma, I guess that's something Rima will have to face. It's, I mean, you know, irrespective, you can, we can see why she won the contest, but you can, it's going to be a constant battle to, to have to answer all these kind of questions, including some of the ones we have yeah. to answer. Yeah, that's been the most fascinating part of this, is yeah. it is a beauty contest. And, and after, you know, opinions aside on the value of, of the way they treat women, don't treat women, whatever. Rima won a, a beauty contest in America that is a big deal for this country. And the problem for people is that Rima doesn't fit their narrative of either an Arab American or how an American Muslim should be. So she, I mean, immediately there's a, there's a desire to say no, 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 something must, something else must be at play because we are not allowed, frankly, to be the full spectrum of America. And that's an unfortunate thing. It started where we couldn't even be hyphenated Americans. We were the, the, the uh, sort of creation of petrodollars. We were Arab, not Arab American. Well, we, we've spent 30 years kind of fighting that and getting over that and explaining and, and you know being full parts of the society. Rima's a product of that. And there are some people who have to cling to that and just can't simply accept it. And Maya, you, you pretty much shared the same sort of route coming from Lebanon over mm -hmm. to, to Dearborn, Michigan, um, probably about 20 years just before uh, Rima came in. But I, I wonder how much things changed in terms of attitude in, in that time. Well, I think dramatically. I, I think we, yeah. like all immigrant communities, in terms of how they assimilate into, our, in, into the United States, and frankly, it's one of the most unique things about this country. When, you, when I talk to my parents as to why they chose America as opposed to any of the other countries they could have gone to, we left as a product of a war breakout. And they simply said it, this is the one place where you could be hyphenated, where you could fully be American. Um, and, and I think we experienced that, like all immigrants in different stages. And so we're supposed to have a certain role, so I'm potentially allowed to, to do certain jobs, but a beauty queen who is both Muslim, and I really appreciate the way, Rima, you've talked about this in terms of saying, I'm a secular Muslim, I accept this label, not that label. It shatters all of that. She is what she yeah. is, and you simply well, have to accept thank it. Thank you so much, Ms. Barry, and I'd like to agree with her on one thing. This is also a country built on immigration. It's built on uh, freedom and opportunity, and I think a lot of us have the tendency to forget that. And Ms. Barry mentioned something, that we've migrated here, especially because we're the product of war. And I know I'm Muslim, I know I'm Arab, and I'm proud of it. And people ask me, well, you're the first Arab, are you the first Muslim? I'll say, I, that has not been confirmed just because other girls were not asked that question. Right. So therefore, I am proud of who I am. And I'd like to all realize, I want you all to realize something, okay? Miss Universe has Miss Egypt, has Miss Albania, as Miss Turkey, these are countries that are also Islamic countries. Mm -hmm. So we are all product of beauty. We might not be conservative, but we're all here to show everyone that nah, we're beautiful on the inside and on the outside. And this is just something that comes together with education, with personality, with the heart, with more than just wearing a bathing suit in an evening gown. Now, of course, Rima, you have a fascinating background, too, because your family uh, comes from a prominent uh, Shia Lebanese family. But you also had a fantastic mix, I think, in your extended family, different religions, different uh, backgrounds, which kind of shows the sort of diversity of Lebanon, too. Yes, of course. Well, I think a lot of them always assume that Lebanon is just an Islamic country. When, if not 50%, probably a little bit more, there's more probably Catholic than I believe than Muslim, so I can't say more on the statistics. But when you go there, it's beautiful. You see a church and a mosque sometimes right next door to each other. And uh, we have beautiful beaches. We have n wonderful nightclubs. Beirut is, is a city that is built on so many different cultures also. You meet people from Greece, from Italy, from Ireland, from all over the world. And I think just, I want people to look more into that, okay? So I think this is a beautiful opportunity. What do you say? Rima, yeah, no, well, let me ask you also how much harder it is for you, of course, now having every aspect of your life under scrutiny, uh, not just because you're so prominent in the media now, having won this, this prestigious title, but also because of your background. Of course, there's the issue of people, you know, there's the whole pole dancing article, there's the sexy lingerie. Now, everything you do is under, under uh, scrutiny. How have you handled all that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, how do you handle that when people come up with this stuff? Well, it's not new to me. You know, I mean, uh, the reason I say it's not new to me is because I grew up in a very respectful home with my mom and my father, always keeping an eye on, on us in a more, you know, disciplined way. So my dad always taught me 
the way you pre you know present yourself at home to us as your parents you have to present out there on the streets now once you're successful and that was the first thing Miss Universe told me the second I landed in New York they said listen you're successful everyone's gonna want a piece so that pole dancing that came out right after I won it went from being just like an aerobics morning event with females to something that looked completely not the way it should be on mm -hmm. TV. And I'm not going to lie, they're not the best pictures. I don't like them at all. However, they were something that were portrayed and taken out of co uh, context. So the way I present myself now is I continue to smile because I'm very happy and I continue to present myself in the utmost respect. Of course, I'm not going to be taking any more aerobics classes because <laughs> I have my own trainer. but. Just like my community in Dearborn, and I would like to thank Miss Barry because her wonderful sister Amal Barry and Heba Wafali in Dearborn, Michigan, were two good examples of individuals who are Arab American who are presenting themselves in the utmost respect, and that's how I'd like to refer. For, I'm sorry, refer no. myself to you as well. We've got Canada on the line. Andrew's uh, with us. Andrew, what would you like to ask? Yes, hi. I'd like to say, Rima. First of all, you're really beautiful, not just as thank you as a person going through a competition, but it's your aura that shows. It's your upbringing, the way you are. I come from a minority okay. here north of uh, Montreal, Canada, and I could say one thing. It's who you are and what your heart is. It depicts to everybody. Peace, yes. love, goodwill to all men. And you show that. Yes, it's over here Thank in America, you. it's not of being a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant or being whatever you want to be or a French Canadian mm -hmm. or whatever. You are you. And that's what depicts. Mm -hmm. And as long as you show that in front of people, be happy with yourself, smile, and you'll always get a smile back. Respect right. people for their cultures of who and the way they're brought up. Whether well, their, yes. their yeah. different religion is different, who cares? I love they it. have I moralities. Love it. Right. Andrew, thank you so That's much for those comments. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Rima, don't go away. And Maya, stand by too. We're going to take a short break here. We have more of our discussion in a moment. We'll be right back. Don't go away.